Hello and welcome to the show. We are back on BeamNG Drive, taking more of your automation vehicles around the autocross course. This particular one seems to be cutting its tyres in half. That's a little concerning. Uh, our first car comes from John Wolf 234 It is the JWR Tacoma F FRM Competition Spec. All-wheel drive V6, naturally aspirated in this. 336 horsepower, 210 torque. Engine-wise, power pretty good. A little bit heavier, 1,170 kilos. A mighty aeroplane wing at the back. Uh, so... They might be fairly quick, I think. I think, yeah, ultimate, ultimate fastest times are going to be a little bit difficult. Oh, Christ. Well, there goes the wing. Okay, the wings could be like Not that it matters too much, perhaps. Uh, <laughs> don't know quite how cars work in terms of... Uh, oh, what the hell is all these? The brakes seem like they are so powerful, the car basically comes to a dead stop if you touch them, which is good and everything. Just got to be wary. Braking zones might be a little bit different in this. Uh, it's got very, very big front brakes and very cold front brakes even. We're not even getting enough temp. So we've had cars that have melted their brakes. I mean, this is front brakes are not actually up to working temperature yet, really. I think if they're too cold, they get quite sort of snatchy. And even with ABS, you can get a little bit of locking. I mean, it should be pretty good come the end of this big straight mind. Hopefully, at least. Here we go. We won't, certainly won't be... Oh, we're struggling. The old acceleration front there, that was not massively quick. <laughs> I mean, it was under it was under 80 miles an hour. We really have not got... You actually see the whole car juddering as you get on the brakes. We haven't got the wheel wall. We haven't got the ABS turning itself off. Oh, graze the wall. 20.8 on the first run. Hmm. An interesting... I mean... <laughs> The wing's probably not going to last because it is so much wider than the car. It's actually quite the pain getting it around some of these uh, tight corners because you want to be right on the, you know, right close to some of these concrete walls. That wing is probably not going to survive the run. Uh, it would fit through the... We haven't had anything that doesn't fit through the gateways yet. But, uh, yeah, it went... Whoa, there we go. That was very, very close to uh, <laughs> clonking the wing off. So, once again, we have brake slight not problems but difficulties in dealing with the brakes in this we get like micro locking I, I don't think that's a term but it is it is a very useful one for this essentially the brakes lock up uh, well that's kind of I guess how ABS would would potentially work more more normally in that we get a lock up first look at like these juddery lock ups almost that go on from the car they're quite snatchy snatchy brakes that's the best terminology I think I can come up with for the vehicle. Okay, back straight. Manual gearbox probably won't help it here because there is that delay as you go through. The sequential boxes are ideal. There is that no there's no delay in the in the power delivery. Whereas this you have that weight as it gets the next gear. Christ it shakes about no end when you are on the brakes. When you're on the brakes hard that is it's a little bit sketchy. Uh, it's not the wheels like the entire car is shaking. <laughs> 21 4 that time around, there's a lot of a lot of vibrations going through, especially the back of the car. I don't know why, particularly. But either either way, what can we do on this final run? Can I get a sub twenty out of the car? This is going to be difficult. I mean, there's potentially a little bit of time if I can be neat and tidy everywhere. It is a touch scary trying to slow it down, basically. It's another one for very different reasons that is a touch scary trying to get it uh, get it slowed. Actual handling wise, pretty good. Actual handling, you know, we've got decent amount of turn in, we've got decent uh, decent corner speed, especially through this fast turn. This is where you can often see some of the cars struggling. It's not too bad there. It feels like more so than I think actually maybe why, more so than other cars. We're spending, the gear engine is very short, we're spending a lot of time waiting for gears to engage, simply because we go through more gears in this car than we would in some others. And this is the big downside, if you're going to have a manual car, uh, you really don't want to have to have the driver be doing a lot of changing, because we're just losing again, we lose, and again, we lose. So, 
yeah, that's that's a slight a slight downside. If you are going to have a manual gearbox, you would probably want to to have had uh, as little amount of gear changing as possible. Engine wise, isn't too bad. I think it's just struggling a little bit for being able to use that power because you are almost constantly changing gear. Yeah, it's another. That actually felt like the best run of the lot, but uh, nope. No more out of little. Certainly not a terrible car to drive and an impressive wing to boot, but uh, certainly a lack of straight line speed. And I think just so long waiting, changing gear, trying to find any power. But that's together with perhaps a little bit more weight. And yeah, a touch difficult. Our next vehicle is certainly on paper looking like a serious contender here. Uh, it comes from Hector 2001. It is the Camino 23. All-wheel drive turbocharged i5 in this one. 515 horsepower. A lot of power. Not the most powerful, no. We have seen cars up in the six, seven, eight hundred 800 horsepower mark. But still, 500 is a lot of horsepower. 338 torque as well. Weight is 1,053 kilos, so it is a little bit heavier. What do we got brake-wise? They look massive. That's good. Tires are pretty massive. Wheel wobble is potentially a concern, and very short wheelbase with uh, quite a high centre of mass could be interesting on this. Certainly acceleration-wise, we should have more than enough uh, power to compensate for the weight. My concern, well, I'd say my concern would be, uh, through the corners we might be a little bit sketchy, although we'll have to wait and see on that one. Of course, yeah, the 700 kilo cars can get around the corners uh, better, although a certain amount can be made up with uh, better sort of better suspension tuning, uh, better setups, etc. Oh, what are we doing with this? The brakes feel a little scary. Uh, <laughs> I think that's more just because we are going ferociously fast and the brakes are struggling. Uh, I think it's just more that we're going 20 miles an hour, well, not 20, 20, but we're certainly going a few miles an hour quicker than most of the cars will have gone when we get to some of these turns. Uh, that then does tend to make the brakes feel a little bit uh, sketchier. There's a, just a lot, there's a lot of power and a lot of brutality in this car. A lot of power wants to escape very, very quickly, although we already nearly saw it roll off a curb there. What are we going to do straight line speed wise in this 90 miles an hour? Not bad at all. Not bad at all there. Are we going to see two a moment through here? We have from some of the SUVs. It's not quite got the right height for that sort of shenanigans. Uh, another big jump on the brakes for the hairpin. Okay, it's been a little scruffier run this. There's definitely a cleaner run in the car. 18-3. Big crash. <laughs> impressive, impressive crash there. Cre impressive uh, finish. For the car, an 18.3. Yeah, there is more time, I feel, in that car. I don't know if we've got the grip to fight in the 16s. I don't know if we have. It is... Uh, it's not bad through the corners. However, I don't know if we can quite carry the uh, the ultimate the ultimate speed. I should think a 17 is doable with this as we uh, change direction again through these, ooh, through these little areas here. It's... <laughs> It's certainly nowhere near the most difficult or the most ferocious car I've had to drive. It's kind of controllable ferocity that makes it an entertaining prospect to drive. It's certainly not a dull car to drive. It's certainly not a dull car to drive. An interesting exhaust layout as well, although I probably shouldn't pay too much attention to the uh, unusual collection of exhausts there. Christ, don't get on that power too soon. Uh, while the handling isn't too bad, you know, if you suddenly try and dump 500 horsepower, while taking that sort of turn, you are going to understeer very wide and not make it back to the corner, to the course where you want to be. Right, what are we going to see? Straight line speed out of you again. It is the 90 or so mile an hour. Doesn't feel, I say it doesn't feel the most amazing under brakes in a couple, like even down there. Well, that's going to get a twitch. Oh, I very much thought we were about to have a big crash then. We brushed, we brushed the gateway. Oh, change of direction, not too shabby. Oh, well, we <laughs> we took off. <laughs> we lost, I think, the rear, like a slight, like a rear lip, followed by two of the exhausts. <laughs> I mean, it's an interesting. Oh, was it the, actually no, it was the front spoiler? We, we lost the front, the front spoiler came off, and two of the exhausts fell off. <laughs> Why not? Wasn't quicker. I'm not sure what else I can do with this car. It's maybe I'm slightly overdriving it through some of the corners. Kind of feels like there's not much. Yeah, 
it uh, doesn't really feel like there's much more I can do in terms of real corner grip with this car. So that is what it is, and then we just make the most of that acceleration because it is plentiful. I'm up now. I'm now probably underdriving the car. Yep. <laughs> uh, it's just trying to. Trying to find a point where some of these cars are happy is not the easiest, the easiest thing. Now we have seen cars go uh, quick with a two-wheeled incident on their run. Now I'm going to try and hug that too closely to the inside. I think it's all gone with this one. It's certainly, uh, yeah, I think ferocious is just the way to describe this car. It's a little bit mad everywhere. Oh God, and uh, perhaps not quite enough. Quite enough grip in important places. It does actually bobble around a little bit there as you jump on the power. Uh, panic and get it slowed down. I mean, yeah, it's certainly a very, very, very quick car. But maybe just not as accessible as some of the uh, the real fast machines. And ultimately, yeah, while we can make up time with acceleration, that few hundred kilos uh, around the corners is uh, just a bit too much. For the vehicle, I mean, still, that one there with a big two-wheel moment is a 19-1. Yeah, mad, mad car. Not the easiest to drive fast, but uh, good fun. The third vehicle to run through the course today is an interesting-looking car, actually. An interesting use of the Porsche body style here. Kind of a busy-looking car, if that makes sense. I wouldn't say it was a bad-looking vehicle, though. Uh <laughs> comes from Geofunny. It's called the Geo Automobilia Keller Hexa. Rear wheel drive contender here. Naturally aspirated i6, 337 horsepower, 212 torque, and it is pretty damn light, 821 kilos. Might be a bit scary. Might be very fast, is what I'm thinking. That That's probably... It's going to be one or the other. It's either going to be a serious contender... Okay, maybe not third gear off the line. Uh, it's going to either be a serious contender for fastest rear-wheel drive or two-wheel drive car, or it's going to be oversteery and terrifying. Could be... Could be either. Turns to be the way, fairly high... Fairly high power, fairly light two-wheel drive cars. Uh, whoopsie daisy, I think we're going to be, I think we might be more of the quite oversteer, actually it's quite, it's quite understeery, swiftly followed by quite oversteery, whoa, nope. <laughs> okay, this is going to be a fun one, this is going to have to be a carefully, carefully does it, you see, I'm not sure if I want, oh, this is one of those that first gear, first gear works out of these corners, but I fear Bloody hell. That transition from first to second, if I get that wrong, or if I get that at an awkward point, I bet we're going to have a very, very sideways car, which is not really what I want to be dealing with yet up there. I mean, it should be mighty fast down here. It gets wheel spin. Now, there are two sort of approaches with this car, or this kind of car. Either... You try and be ultra aggressive with it and hope you don't bin it, which was whoa no. <laughs> yeah, I think this is going to have to be a cautiously, cautiously sort of approach with this. When it's this difficult to drive, I think we'll find more time. Well, we'll <laughs> at the end of the day. To set a half decent time, you need to not crash, and the cautiously, cautiously approach, we're less likely to crash in, and we've only got two more runs to go. Let's go for a cautiously, a more cautious approach. I think we'll go second gear out of the corners. I'm hoping, it is a naturally aspirated car, so I'm hoping that second gear, there'll still be the, the power there. I mean, it's still going to go sideways in second, but it's slightly less ferocious, and more importantly, I don't have to do an awkward gear shift. Also, a little bit easier to manage that wheel spin. We're less likely to see big twitches. Of course, it does mean we are potentially losing, using, sorry, a little bit less of the horsepower, although the horsepower is causing the issues with this. So I'm hoping it's a good compromise with this car. There we go. Nicely does it through there. And there's probably times where we can get away with a, a change down into first, but for this, we'll go for just a balanced approach. Careful. Like, I want to get on the power. So it's a delicate, delicate balancing act through some of these longer corners. You want to get on the power, but 
go on it too soon, you're going to oversteer and lose a huge amount of time. You go on it too late and you are going to uh, just be wasting time that you could be using accelerating. Jeez, it is, it is fast considering I can't really get anywhere near full throttle down that back straight as early as we have done with a lot of the all-wheel drive cars and it's up into the 80 mile an hour mark. It's, it's, it's ferocious, uh, that it is. Uh, <laughs> It's another, it's another mad little car. I don't know if I wanted first through all of that. What are we going to see? Lap tide, 23-0. Not looking like a record for a two-wheel drive car, I'll be honest. But uh, a, not a bad time. For a real drive car, you know, 23 is not a bad time whatsoever. Right, so now we've got to go for a mixture of that carefully, carefully approach. Uh, Basically, like acceleration zones like this that are sort of a big corner, definitely, definitely don't want to go for first gear. But acceleration zones like this, maybe I could get away with a little bit of first. Yeah, just, it's a bit, it's one of those that's a little bit terrifying to try it, because you're never sure if you're going to have just overcooked it that little bit, get the big wheel spin moment, and then you're off into like that, off into the wall. We held it this time around. Will it cost us a little bit of time there, though? Yeah, that's the, uh, <laughs> that's the danger. Hell, that is not even a... I mean, that is not a, you know, on-power moment through there. You're actually slowing down. It might be the weight transfer almost as I was on the brakes and maybe a little bit of steering that I probably shouldn't have been doing. But, uh... <laughs> It's a scary machine. We've had a we've had a fair share of scary machines so far today. Come on, come on, car. We can get up to 84 miles an hour. That's very, very quick for what isn't an earth-shattering amount of power. 300 horsepower, fairly common uh, for the amount we are struggling with the traction. It is a very, very fast accelerating machine. All right, second gear is what I'm going to want through here because this transition is going to get big oversteer if we get it wrong. Oh, it's a slightly better time, I think. 23.0 a very quick car but very difficult to access any of the speed essentially in it it's not bad not a bad handling car a uh, little prone to oversteer combine that with quite brutal power delivery it's it's difficult fast but uh, <laughs> very difficult and to finish us off for today we have the Turbo Works Thunder, uh, built by that annoying turbo, kind of an Iron Man uh, looking car. All wheel drive turbocharged V8 in this 290 horsepower, uh, 280 torque. The car weighs 941 kilos, is very, very low uh, to the ground. The wheels look quite small for it, uh, I guess. I, I think that's what. It's slightly funky, looks slightly odd in some way and I think it's the wheel size but either way we're going to run the car through the course I mean power wise it is not the most impressive we've seen again power to weight ratio wise we've seen you know more powerful and lighter cars however it's not too bad in the weight front and if it can handle its power again it can use its power well then that's the important thing I've driven it pretty badly through these first sections, I will be honest. It's actually got quite a good amount of turn in. Uh, like there, for example, on the exit, once it's got that grip, it does actually turn in pretty damn, pretty damn well. Uh, it's another car with a manual gearbox, uh, which is a little bit of a concern. We have saw, well, we saw how it affected the first car in terms of the amount of time you are there having to change gear, the sort of time loss in the change. To be fair, that was an unusual example. That did seem an excessively large amount. This big straight here is where you're going to see it the most. Yeah, we've got very short gear ratios. Again, that's that's really hurt the car. <laughs> There's so much need for changing of gears there that it's, it's probably changing gear almost as long as it's accelerating down there, which is why we see less than 70 miles an hour. It should I say it should, with the engine and the weight with the sequential box, it would be considerably faster down there. It's going to be a 23.9. Not a bad opening, considering I did, I did drive the first part of that run pretty badly. I think we were all sorts of wonky at almost all of the hairpins. That delay is potentially going to be costly. I don't think we're going to get a sub-20, certainly, out of the car. Not with that much time 
potentially being lost. But I will do what I can with the uh, with the machine around here. Yeah, like the quarter speed there is is pretty good. Like that mid that mid corner speed here, it does hold its line at those speeds very very nicely. Uh, up here, what are we going to be able to get out of the car? Oh, I might have. Uh, no, it's still got pretty good speed through there as well. So we're going to have to make up time. I wish don't want to change gear. <laughs> Well, like third, to be fair, third gear is pretty good for most of this course. Uh, it's short enough to get it out of most of these tighter hairpins. And if I can... I mean, if it loses me a smidge of power, but is better than the time it takes to change change gear, it might actually be worth it. Oh, God. It's really, really struggling with speed down the back straight. It's really, really... I mean, it's one of the slower cars we have seen down there and it really shouldn't be with its power and its and its weight uh, as we head around this final little section we are across the line 21 9 it is a better time can i do any more with it that is the <laughs> that is the important question it seems like today the manual cars i think must just be their very very short gear ratios which means you are just changing gear constantly because we have had various manuals before and while you know they've lost that, that little bit of time as well in the old in the old shifting. It's never felt as much as these two have. I think it must just be the sheer number of shifts that, uh, that I'm having to do with the car. Do we reckon third gear will work out of here? Yeah, I think it will. I think we'll stick it with third everywhere. Third's going to be the gear to go in this, in this car. And just uh, hope we don't lose too much time. We shouldn't actually. With such short gear ratios, uh, third should be more than good enough getting it out of these corners. Doesn't seem excessively laggy in terms of the in terms of the turbo engine, so that's useful. Uh, around this long turn we go. Yeah, got the line nicely through there. Again, is that a change to fourth? I would be curious to know how much how much time is lost simply with that. Uh, Simply with that gearbox, right? So I go onto the back straight. I have one less gear change to worry about, but still, what we're going to get straight line speed down here. Yeah, you see, just with carrying a different gear there, we're a couple of miles an hour faster. I mean, it's still got to, still got to wait. We were certainly going to be doing 100 down there with a normal gearbox, but uh, it's probably losing 10 or so miles an hour at the end of the straight, and that's a fairly sizable chunk. It's a fairly sizable chunk of, uh, of of straight line speed. Hey, 20.6 in the end. Excellent handling car. Excellent, excellent handling car. <laughs> Let down a little bit by a gearbox. Perhaps, you know, if we're going for ultimate, ultimate lap times, maybe not quite enough power, but I, I think that's it's more to do with the gearbox. It's more to do with the gearbox. It's just not able to yeah, utilise the power that is there because it's so often being wasted while you're faffing around changing, changing gears. Still, excellent, excellent handling car. On to the leaderboard, and it would be the Camino 23 that would go fastest of the day in all of its mad and scary glory. He'll go into a 16th place, a 118.3 for the car. I mean, we've said this before, and it's every episode is getting closer and closer. I mean, from 12th to 21st place, separated by 9 tenths of a second. So a car that is rather difficult and rather punishing when you make mistakes can uh, struggle a little bit around this circuit. And next two vehicles, well, we have both of the manuals. The uh, Turbo Works and the JWR will go into 47th place and uh, 50th, respectively. You know, 20.6 is not bad. You know, 20.6 is not a bad, not a bad time. I mean, both of these cars were fairly good. Ultimately, the gearboxes proved costly. It's the first time we've really seen manual gearboxes actually struggle. Uh, certainly the turbo works power-wise, weight-wise, wasn't too shabby, but it's just the amount of time you sat waiting to change gears. They, JWR might have been a little bit on the heavy side, but again, the, the time lost in the gear change with those cars did seem exaggerated, I'm guessing, from having short gears, large number of gear shifts. And finally, we find the rear-wheel drive mad machine. A bit further down, the Geo Automobilia. Uh, a 23-0, though, for a rear-wheel drive car is yeah not too shabby. It was quick. 
but likes to slide. Spun its wheels an awful lot. It's about a second and a half down on the fastest of the rear wheel drive cars. We see it beats the Happy Bunny Super Light by about half a second. Had the power, just did not have the grip to go with it, but still overall pretty decent. That, though, is going to be it for this episode. Thank you all very much for watching, and until next time, a goodbye.